Today, we will be providing you with a basic overview on how to properly grow and maintain cacao seedlings in a greenhouse. Early establishment plays a critical role in the long-term health of cacao plants. So, whether you would like to just grow a few trees in your backyard, or would like to plant out a whole orchard, it is important to take the time and effort to use the best available practices to improve the likelihood of your success. Materials needed. Ripe cacao pods. Mallet or machete. A colander. A large mixing tub or wheelbarrow. Preferred planting media. Promix, sunshine, or similar. Small size perlite. Shovel. A garden trowel. A hose or a watering can. Secateurs. Nursery tags. Pencil. Triple 13 slow release fertilizer, such as Osmocote, Nutricote, or similar. A teaspoon measuring spoon. MT38 pots and corresponding trays. You will need sufficient trays to hold two times more pots than seedlings. This will be explained later. Seedling propagation should be done in an area that is protected from direct rain and wind, and where irrigation is accessible. It is recommended to plant in a polyethylene greenhouse with 40 to 60% shade incorporated. Let's get started. Step 1. Selecting pods. When propagating cacao seedlings, it is important to use ripe pods that have been recently picked from your selected tree, as this will result in a higher germination rate in the seeds you plant. It should be noted that cacao is generally not true to type, meaning that the seedlings typically will not resemble the mother tree from which they came. Grafting a selected tree onto a seedling rootstock can be employed to bypass this particular issue but we will discuss that in more detail later on in the video. When planting from seed, however, it is still important to select healthy pods from trees that display good agronomic traits, including high yields, a good pod index, disease tolerance, shapely architecture, and reasonable vigor, since some of these characteristics may indeed be passed along. Pods generally contain between 25 and 60 seeds, depending on the health of the tree, season at which they were harvested, and genotype. Once you have selected your pods and are ready to plant, open the pod using a machete or mallet. After the pod has been opened, discard one half of the husk and use your fingers to scoop out the beans from around the placenta and into the colander. Gloves can be used for this, as the pulp is slightly sticky and acidic, but it is not necessary. Examine the pulp surrounding the seed, making sure it is milky white in appearance, and not brown, dried out, or germinated. Do not plant any germinated seeds, as the root will most likely be damaged, which can affect long-term performance of your seedlings. Step 2. Preparing Seeds for Planting Wash seeds gently in the colander so that some of the excess pulp is removed. While this step is not absolutely necessary for the germination process, it has been shown to reduce the likelihood of rodents and insects digging up the seeds after planting. Once your seeds have been washed, sort through them by hand and discard any small, flat, underdeveloped, or damaged seeds. When you have finished sorting, do a final count of your seeds, as this will determine the amount of pots you will need to prepare for planting. Set the colander of seeds aside and move on to the next step. Step three, preparing media and filling pots. In a large mixing tub or wheelbarrow, place a one-to-one -one ratio of your preferred media and small size perlite. Mix them together thoroughly with a shovel, being sure to break up any clumps of media in the process. Wet your media so that it is moist, but not saturated. Stir the media with a shovel as you do so to ensure the mix is evenly watered. Fill your tray with MT38 pots and then scoop your media into each pot, like so. This can be done using your hands or with a garden trowel. Fill each pot to the brim and then, using both hands, 
tamp the tray on the ground or on a table so that the media is firmly compacted within the pots. Refill your pots and tamp the tray again. Top off each of your pots with media so that it is about one half inch below the brim of the pot. MT38 pots, which can be ordered from Stu and Sons, are preferred because of their adequate height, which promotes a healthy taproot, and vertical ridges that channel the root system downwards, as opposed to clumping up along the sides. Step 4. Planting Seeds Poke a 1 quarter inch indentation into the media of each pot, marking the placement of your seeds. Select a seed from the colander and examine it. On one side of the seed, there will be a slightly rougher and darker section. This is called the hilum, and is where the root will emerge when the seed germinates. Making sure that the hilum is facing directly downwards, place your seed in the indentation mark in the media. Gently press the seed in so that it is halfway submerged in the media, as shown. Alternatively, if you cannot locate the hilum, don't panic. Simply place the seed down horizontally in the pot and lightly cover it with about one quarter inch of media. Cacao is epigeal in its growth, which means that after germination, the seed will be lifted from the surface of the media by the root. Because of this, it is important to not plant your seed too deep as that will restrict the process by trapping the seed in the media. Label each tray using a nursery tag. It is recommended to at least mark down the date of planting, but you can add whatever additional information you feel to be necessary, such as the name of the site or farm and mother tree that the pod was harvested from. Once you have planted your seed, Repeat this process until all pots in the tray are complete. When you're finished, water them in lightly and place the trays on a raised, perforated bench in your greenhouse. Do not keep them on the ground, as this will cause water drainage and aeration to be decreased, which can result in oversaturation of the media and likely give rise to root rot or other disease pressure. Having your plants on raised benches will also encourage air pruning of the roots, which will prevent the tap root from growing out of the pot and into the ground. It is recommended to incorporate approximately 40% to 60% shade cloth in your greenhouse to encourage optimal growth and health of your seedlings. If your site has extreme light conditions, you will need to adjust the percentage of your shade cloth accordingly to avoid over- or under exposure. Step five, early management practices. After about 14 days, your seeds should begin to germinate. This can take slightly longer when propagating during cooler times of the year or at higher elevations. It is common in cacao propagation to get 95 to 100% germination and should be strived for. During germination, you will notice that the seed is lifted from the soil by the taproot and will then split in two, casting aside the seed coat in the process to reveal the plumule and first leaves. During this period, the seed coat can become dry and harden around the seed, causing deformities in the architecture of the leaflets, like so. This can be prevented by either gently removing the seed coat by hand after germination, or by using slightly higher water pressure when hand watering the seedlings. The jet of water will often loosen and dislodge the seed coat during the proper time. That being said, the seeds will most often do this themselves, and you will not have to undertake these measures. Just keep an eye out and react situationally. Step 6. Fertilizing, culling, and sorting. After the first leaf flush has matured, it's time to fertilize your seedlings. Use one shy teaspoon of triple 13 slow-release fertilizer per plant. This rate and composition of fertilizer will provide your seedlings with adequate nutrients for two to three months and is necessary for healthy root and shoot growth. 
evenly distribute the fertilizer on the surface of the media rather than piling it in one place. Water fertilizer in after application. This is also a good time to pick out and discard any seedlings that are lacking in vigor or that are deformed in any way. Be merciless. These are the seedlings that will be used to plant out your future cacao orchard, and you want to select the best possible material to increase your chance of success. After you have removed defective seedlings, sort the vigorous and healthy ones by transferring every other seedling to a new tray so that each 20 cell tray holds only 10 seedlings instead of 20. Although doing this will double the amount of space used in your greenhouse, this method will allow for less light competition between seedlings and promote better architecture and overall health. It is also recommended to organize the seedlings by height so that the seedlings on each tray are uniform in their stage of growth. Continue sorting until each tray has 10 healthy seedlings. Place them side by side on your bench, leaving some space between each tray. Sorting your seedlings by size and culling out unhealthy ones should be done at least once per month. Step 7. Irrigation of Seedlings Water quality is an important and limiting factor in cacao nursery production. Two major concerns in water quality are 1. Salinity and 2. Pests. Water salinity is particularly important with cacao because of the plant's sensitivity to chlorides. Cacao trees with a chloride toxicity will have scorched leaf tips and margins. Fixing salinity issues in your irrigation is expensive. So ideally, the site of your nursery will have a water source with low salinity levels. You can send a water sample to a local lab for a salinity test. Honolulu municipal water tends to have high salinity. The time and rate at which seedlings are watered is dependent on your environment, the season you are propagating in, and the age of your seedlings. During the summertime, when solar radiation is highest throughout the state, you will need to water your seedlings more frequently than in the winter. Similarly, as your seedlings mature and their root systems become more developed, they will need to uptake more water than when they were younger. It is essential for you to check on your plants daily to monitor their needs and to water when necessary. After germination, the goal is to keep the media saturated without overwatering. As a rule of thumb, seedlings should be watered at least once every two days when they are younger, two months or less, and once per day when they have matured. When watering, apply enough so that some water drips out of the bottom of the container, but not so much that the water streams out of the bottom. After you have a handle on the watering schedule necessary for your cacao nursery, you can choose to put in an automated watering system. Overhead irrigation systems like this one are simple to install and effective for younger seedlings, but can be ineffective for more developed seedlings with more leaf cover blocking water from the tops of containers. Drip irrigation systems like this one are more tedious to install and make changes to, but have greater water use efficiency, are effective for every stage of seedling development, are better for integrated pest management, and allow for fertigation and chemigation. The drip system shown here operates at 10 PSI with nozzles emitting 1.8 gallons per hour and is running for two minutes per day for a total of 0.06 gallons of water per plant per day. You may have to adjust the settings on your irrigation controller seasonally. Whether you are hand watering with a hose, or automating your watering system through a controller, watering your cacao seedlings in the nursery will require a careful observation period and constant reevaluation in order to maximize water use efficiency and produce healthy, vigorous trees for your farm. Step 8. General Maintenance Seedlings must be weeded frequently throughout the entire period they are grown in the greenhouse. 
Check your seedlings regularly and remove any weeds that begin to form as soon as you see them to prevent unwanted nutrient competition. Greenhouse pests such as mealybugs and aphids can quickly become an overwhelming problem if left untreated, resulting in extreme plant stress and sometimes death. It is also important to remove small shoots that will begin to grow around the cotyledon line on the stem. If you catch them early on, which is advisable, they are easily removed by simply brushing them off with your thumb and forefinger. In the case that you miss a few shoots early on, remove them with a pair of garden snips, being sure to make the cut flush with the main stem. Here are seedlings at about 1 month, 2 months, and 3.5 months of growth. Step 9. Planting in the field or grafting. After approximately three to four months in the nursery, your seedlings should be ready to either plant into the field or be grafted. While seedling orchards are by far the most common approach in Hawaii at this time, there are many possible benefits of incorporating grafted genotypes into your planting system. Grafting is generally done to increase yield, reduce disease pressure, and improve the final flavor quality of your processed cacao. There are, however, some important things to consider before rushing to adopt this method. Not only are there currently very little data on which genotypes perform well in Hawaii, but it is also relatively difficult to procure budwood, or grafted seedlings, in sufficient quantity from the material that has been tested. Therefore, while there are many benefits of using grafted varieties of cacao, it may be prudent to wait until there have been more trials done in Hawaii so that the material selected is best suited to your conditions and is more readily available. To learn more about specific grafting techniques in Hawaii, check out CTAR's grafting video in the link. Also, if you would like to learn the basic steps involved in establishing and maintaining a cacao orchard, visit Oahu RCD's video to further your knowledge. Thank you for joining us today, and happy planting.